I'm going to be talking about home IPL laser hair removal systems. So this is the device I bought online. It's an intense pulse light used for hair removal. And the packaging is pretty simple. If you look at it, um, it comes in this box. And um, we've got the device here. It's a nice rose gold kind of uh, box. Um, feels pretty cheap, but uh, you can see the light right there. It comes with a power cord as well. Here's the power cord. And then um, they, I, I thought it was kind of nice that they added a couple other things. They added the shaver because you have to shave before you do this treatment. So it came with a cheap razor. And um, so it also came with a pair of glasses and this is to protect your eyes from the light source. So um, it, they, it all looks very uh, cheap, but you know, I think this is what you'd expect when you order something that's non-branded. Now, IPLs are not a laser. Um, IPLs are a light source. And in my practice, I use lasers, not IPLs. But what's the difference? A laser is um, one wavelength, which means it targets one thing in the skin. The other thing is it's collimated and coherent, which means the wavelengths travel in one direction and they're very, very focused. IPLs, on the other hand, are not focused. The so light is traveling in all directions, so it's not quite as powerful. Um, and they have multiple wavelengths, which means that they do not target one thing. So when we know what the target is that we want to treat, which is the pigment and hair follicle, I think a laser is always best. With that said, there are no home laser systems. So let's continue to talk about IPL. Home IPL devices are much less powerful than an IPL in a medical office. And so what this means is more power, more results, more power, uh, more risk of complications. So the home devices are a little bit less risky. So the way these devices work is they work by heating and damaging the hair follicle. And um, it's gonna work best in people with lighter skin types with darker hair follicles because pigment is pigment. So if the device is targeting pigment and you have brown or darker skin types, it's gonna, the energy is gonna get absorbed in the skin and it's not gonna reach its target, which is the hair follicle. Now, with medical laser treatments, you're gonna need six to eight treatments, about six to eight weeks apart, and it takes, it's very, they're very quick. It takes about five to 10 minutes. Whereas home devices have a small spot size, so there's a lot more treatments required. Now, to pre-treat before you're gonna do these things, what you wanna do is you wanna shave the hair follicle because if the hair is long, it can actually burn the skin when it gets heated up. Um, you don't wanna wax or pluck the hair follicles because you lose your target if you pluck the hairs. And the pigment in the hair follicle is a target, and if you don't have that hair follicle underneath the skin, it's not gonna work. In our practice, we'll numb our patients prior to to minimize the amount of pain. Um, but for those of you at home, you probably can't get numbing. Um, so you do wanna clean the area before you treat because the dirt and oil on the skin can actually reflect the light um, decreasing the eff efficacy of the treatment. So question is, how much does it hurt? Everyone wants to know, I'm a big baby, I always wanna know how much it hurts. And they say with the, the home device, it's like a rubber band snap. Well, ha ha ha, if, if you're using a medical device, it's actually quite painful. But remember, beauty is pain. So what you can do also is, if we're worried about having too dark a skin or we're, we're worried about burning our skin, you can do a spot treatment first. And what you do is just do the spot treatment and then you leave it alone for a couple of days and see if you're having any reaction to the skin. Now in a medical office, sometimes we'll bypass this step because we, do, we have a lot of experience. So most of the time we don't need to do a test spot. Now, most devices will have a sensor on them so that they only work if you're in contact with the skin. And the reason for this is we don't want to direct the beam at your eye because it can affect the retina and it can lead to blindness. Now the risks with these devices are blisters, burns, discoloration, and scars. And I talked about blindness a minute ago. Who should not use the, these devices? Well, if you have light hair, it's not gonna work. Or if you have dark skin, it's probably not gonna work as well. Um, everything is contraindicated in pregnancy just because we don't wanna affect any infants or, or children that are about to be born. Uh, a lot of devices say use it if you're an adult, um, so if you're a child, you probably shouldn't be using it. You don't want to use it in any area where there's pigmentation. So around the nipples, the genitals, and around the anus. Um, also, if you have moles or brown spots, birthmarks on your skin, and if you have a suntan. So if you've been out in the sun, again, the, the laser's going to see that as pigment, and it's going to get absorbed in the, uh, in the tan, and you're going to burn your skin. And tattoos, again, are pigmentation. Also, if you have um, active implants, such as a pacemaker, a neurostimulator, or an insulin pump. So in our office, we use the MD YAG laser. This is still the most effective device on the market, and it can also be used in dark, darker skin types. In terms of my overall evaluation, I say, if you wanna try it, why not? They're not an expensive investment. For people who wanna try it, I think that, you know, give it, give it a try and see what you think. I don't think it's gonna work, and I think it's gonna be really time consuming, but.
So I'd say try it, but I think ultimately you're going to be in our office 